episode 44 of the Downtown Podcast, where every Thursday night we fill this living room full of friends and community members to talk about all the things that are most important to us, the news, events, and people. So one of the reasons we started this podcast is because it gives us a chance as a community to step back and really see the steps of the community is making as a whole. And the reason we get such amazing volunteers like Lexi and Jackie and Sean and Pavel to come out every week. Well, thank you guys for helping. Yeah. They deserve it a lot more than me. That's true. But the reason we get all these amazing people to come out is because we believe that the blueprint that the downtown project is making is not one that you can hand to an architect. It's one that happens every single week when we get together and we help each other through problems. So one of the people who are helping us solve our drinking problem is my friend Steve right here. He paid for the beers, and I want you to talk a little bit about your company, InView Labs. Sure. So InView Labs, we're a tech company on the west side of town here. Um, we're happy to celebrate our third birthday as yeah, of last congrats. month. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, we're in a, we're in a pretty big uh, stage of growth right now. We just hit about 32 employees, and um, we have, uh, you know, being a, a tech company, we actually have two main divisions. One, one side is uh, we develop 3D building models for architects and engineers to actually virtually design buildings before they actually construct those That's projects. Very cool. And that actually eliminates a lot of waste in the construction projects. So, so it's kind of on a green front there as well. Um, and then the other division of the company is our software concert, uh, consulting side. And we're kind of guns for hire, if you will, um, working with companies anywhere from Fortune 500, so local Las Vegas companies as well, and businesses here. Uh, yeah. Really focusing on business automation and you know, a big passion driver behind that side of the business is, you know, as consumers of tech, we all use really great intuitive tech all the time. It's easy to use. When you get into the corporate environment and big business environment, right. there's not so exactly the most user-friendly right. apps over there. So we're trying to change that mantra and really focusing on, on building some better, easy-to-use types of applications for big businesses. Okay, as well. so you're hiring a lot of people, but I'm guessing a many kind of QA people, so UI people, QA, like the kind of UI, stuff that makes a good interface. Yeah, and then, and then, and then general, general types of uh, coders as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're in a big mode of growth right now, so if anybody's interested, uh, feel free to hit us up on InViewLabs.com and reach out to us, and uh, yeah, we'll look forward to hearing from you. You guys can check out uh, InViewLabs.com, or you can follow them on Twitter, InViewLabs. You got it all, so all thank right. you very much. I Thanks appreciate having the beer. Enjoy the beer, guys. Thanks, Steve. Before we hop into the news section, you might notice some changes. Susan is out of town this week, so we have Jackie filling in. She's the COO at Ticket Cake, and she's also the producer of the podcast. So let's give a big warm welcome to her for filling in. We appreciate your help. Thank you. All right. Take it away. I love you. Show them show the magic. Yes. Great. So we're starting off the news roundtable talking to Robert about Startup Weekend. Love Startup Weekend, and it's coming up at UNLV. Business Startup Center, which was a free beer sponsor a few weeks ago. Nice. So tell us more about it. Uh, all right, so Startup Weekend is happening at UNLV. I think something that makes this unique is that it's incorporating college students, and it's getting a lot of students uh, involved on campus to actually come to the Startup Weekend, and we're heavily promoting to the entrepreneurship program that we have there. Um, so we're getting a lot of students, and we're also reaching out into the community from people who have participated in past Startup Weekends. You know, it's kind of like a joint effort of taking college uh, students and then uh, people with business experience and kind of mixing them all together and putting together this uh, great Startup Weekend. Um, I, I think that uh, the thing I most look forward to is actually getting to uh, to see my first startup weekend, and it, it kind of oh, sounds yeah. never yeah. get the first oh. one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it sounds strange to say this, but uh, this is actually uh, my first one that I'll be participating, in, and I'm also organizing it, so it's it's great. Cool. Good. So where do people go, and when is it? Uh, okay, so it's November 22nd through the 24th, and it's at a uh, UNLV in the Student Union. Um, and basically, uh, you can register online. I think our link that we're using is uh, bit.ly backslash swlvunlv. Cool. If you go to that link, you'll be able to register. You guys got the bit.ly memorized. Yeah, yeah. bit.ly yeah. memorized. Yeah. Pretty good. Memorized. Yeah. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah, congrats. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, thank you very much. And we'll jump over now to Charles, because you've taken over the Inspire talks, which were one of the first things that me and Jackie participated in when we first came out here and holds a special spot in our hearts. So tell us what's going on with the Inspire talks. Well, Inspire is community leaders coming together to share personal, vulnerable, and anecdotal stories in whatever medium they feel represents their story best. That can be music, storytelling, aesthetic, 
Um, we've had dancers talk about the physical language. So whatever makes you comfortable, not everyone is a speaker, but everyone mm -hmm. has the ability to inspire their community. Right. And they happen on the fourth Saturday of every month, and it's amazing. Cool. Where yeah. do they take place? Uh, the Learning Village. Either. Yeah, right. actually, this next month we have Dina Titus okay. and Jerry Nadal confirmed. Cool. So wow. those are some pretty heavy hitters. Cool. We've had Myron Martin. We've had um, people from not-for-profits. We love showcasing not-for-profits. Mm. So if you know mm. someone that wants to speak in some way, come let us know. Cool. Yeah, yeah. great. Cool. All right, well, thank you very much awesome. for coming out and talking to us. And, and that's the News Roundtable. That's the News Roundtable. Well, well, thank please. you, Charles. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Yeah, see you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. about themed events and this week is mix mingle and drink with other geeks Drink, drink. drinking and geeking drinking mix, yeah. and geeking and it starts off with geeks and beer aptly named um, for drinking with geeks um, Tuesday November 19th 515 at Miller's Las Vegas Ale House come if you work in technology or a related field and meet other people who are doing the same thing that you're doing like-minded folks so head down to geeks and beer very cool, very cool. And the next meetup um, is a brunch meetup. It's inside Bitcoin's Las Vegas is meeting up. Um, Let's Talk Bitcoin is a group and they're coming to town for a Bitcoin conference on Thursday, December 12th. And they are going to be having brunch at the Wicked Spoon, yeah. which is one of, your, one of your favorite places, right? One of my favorites All in the, the Cosmo. Dishes. Yes, yeah. okay. it's so good. So they'll have brunch. I'm sure they'll have mimosas um, <laughs> from 10 a.m. to noon. It's $35 a person. You can okay. get more information on meetup.com. Talk digital currencies, huh? Yes. Fun. Talk cryptocurrency. And then um, next event is high tech uh, Vegas's holiday mixer. And Ticket Cake was involved in the first uh, high tech Vegas event. This is their December mixer on Thursday, December 19th. Um, it's happening at Hyde Bellagio. And um, you can network with 120 technology companies in one place, one forum. Um, and, and it's a holiday mixer, so you know there'll be lots of booze. Um, it's $10 per person, and you can buy those tickets on TicketCake.com. It comes with one well drink and appetizers. Yeah, and the, and the view of the Bellagio Fountains from the backside. Of course. Yeah, very yes. cool. Yes, and then our last event, we have Alexis, who is a, a podcast volunteer, and she's here to talk about the T-Bound Luncheon. She's president-elect. So she's the right Thank person you. to be talking about Thank this. Thank you. And Jackie yes. is now on our board, which we're super excited to Thank have you. you. And um, as to what T-Band's mission is really to unify the voice of technology here in Las Vegas. So um, luckily, we have Andy White coming next week, which is a great person to help do that. Um, and it's going to be at Fogo de Chao next Wednesday, the 20th, I believe. Yes. Yes, thank yes. you. At 11.30. Nice, and um, we'd also like to invite somebody from this audience to come. It's a $45 uh, lunch. <laughs> so all we ask is that you tweet at TBAM Vegas that you want lunch on us. And we will pick a winner tomorrow and um, let you know who will be our lucky guest downtown podcast guest winner at the T Band luncheon next week. So, so at T Band Vegas, you want lunch on T Band? That's yes. easy. Yep. Cool. Yeah, I know who I want. Meat to Fest win. 2000. Fogo to Chow. All right. Be so there. Awesome. <laughs> Meat Fest. Okay. All right. That's it. Yeah. So before me, I have 50 beautiful audience members. Now unfortunately, I only have one picture in my hand. And this photo represents America's next top podcast guest. Melrose, Melrose, yes. <laughs> All right. Woo. Yeah, screw that taking second place. Woo. 
<laughs> got me going there. I had flashbacks. I was like, what am I going to do after this? Okay, well, we'll take, you, we'll take you out of that memory and back into this one. So how has how the experience really been nice in Las Vegas so far? It's really nice to start this interview here in <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Bring back the greatest moment of my life. Um, well, yeah. But a lot, I mean, you got to admit, whether it was hard or, or not, it definitely not said, you definitely winning. learned a lot from it. Yeah. Oh, it absolutely is. Totally. I, I like traveled for seven years. It was a horrible yeah. second place. They situation. fired Steve Jobs before he took over the world. Yeah, like, they this did. is, you're just on the arc. You need this. It's part of it. I think you win more from being <laughs> humbled in front of millions of people. <laughs> I think you're right. I would. I think so. Okay. So, how's your experience been? So, you got a chance to do the tour yet? Have you officially I, gone down? Yeah. Everyone's amazing. I never thought I could actually say that I would. I like love Vegas, which is so weird to hear me even say that. Um. But tell me a little bit about uh, about your family life. So, you told me that yesterday you have like this real goofy mom, like, and like I you do. play around a lot at home. But tell me how that kind of uh, attitudes influenced the way you see the world and some of the things you're succeeding yeah. at. Yeah. I just think uh, having a like super, a lot of people think I'm really serious from being on the show, but I actually come from a very funny, like fun having family. Yeah, you and see your mom would like take some crabs. Yeah, or my mom would be and, eating like, yeah. like calamari at the dinner table in a restaurant in public, and she'd be like, oh, 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 and yeah. like fall underneath <laughs> the table, and we, my cousin and I would be like mortified, like what did she just die? <laughs> that was a joke. That was a joke. That was a joke. She's okay. So I, we're like a family of practical jokes, and I, we, I just, I like to have fun with everything. And it, this community is so funny because everyone's kind of really like having a good time with what they're doing, and really in love with what they're doing and that's kind of how I am so it's really nice to be around people that aren't necessarily judgmental on like you think you're gonna start a bikini company do you know how many bikini companies there are yeah. everyone here's like cool can you fly in them like what do, what's the feature yeah. <laughs> what's the additional feature we, okay, how can we help you right you know teleporting bikinis. Oh, Lady Gaga first in our day because you talked to me yesterday about kind of the attitudes of all the models you worked with and then now that you've kind of started like traveling a bit more and like kind of getting into different groups and especially in the fashion world yeah so I, I lived in six countries in the last seven years and oh, nice. I was in the modeling industry with all these like really pretty kind of ugly people mm -hmm. and I met a lot of like <laughs> I'm just being honest. Just because you're tall and skinny doesn't mean you're hot. No names, people. No um, names. I'm not putting out names. I'm just saying that a lot of times, a lot of like beautiful people that I would come across would be like the people that I wasn't necessarily modeling with or competing against, and yeah. they were, were super inspiring. And so, yeah, I just think um, gone, the yeah. world is like we're a globally dependent society. So like we're becoming more globally dependent, and I think we have to have like an understanding of people's cultures and how they operate and I'm lucky enough to have lived in so many different places and I, ju I just think that I just think your attitude can make you so beautiful and like the, it's so funny to meet people from all over the world who are actually free thinking and doing really cool things it's it's really so tell me about uh, what this company is that you started and your kind of entrepreneurial journey so far Okay, so I have a company called Paradisiac, which is um, that the definition of that is someone who's addicted to paradise. So the okay. idea was that's you. Well, I am addicted, addicted to paradise, to paradise yeah. but I, I guess we all are, my but. business is kind of like founded on this concept that like everybody kind of thinks bikinis, the beach, this is so cool, this is true paradise, but like actually the backbone of the company, which is kind of what I'm going to be talking about tomorrow, is um, having a a conscience with what you're doing because the modeling industry cheers. Oh yeah, oh, no, I just, <laughs> we're just keeping the flow going. You Making know? sure you drink all the way through your yeah. design process. <laughs> do what you got to do, you know. <laughs> um, no, so I I came out of modeling and there's a lot of issues in in the industry, but also traveling, you're exposed to a lot of global issues, and so. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of models turned philanthropists, and I don't necessarily want to run a nonprofit. I definitely want to run a for profit, but I want there to be this structure with it that kind of follows people that I'm influenced by, like the one for one concepts with Tom's and yeah, people, Tom's shoes yeah, and like people that, yeah. who just have a conscience, you know. And no, that matters it's a lot. Interesting yeah. to exist in a world where it's like me, me, me. Like we've done that for so long. Like I was on Friendster before oh, MySpace. Really? Before Facebook, you were on yo. Friendster. I was on Friendster. Anybody else on Friendster? I think social media is an amazing like platform. No, you're the Ooh. only one. You're the biggest nerd. I'm the oldest model the first, ever. Yeah, the first time I guess from Fashion Week is out nerded us all. I'm so out nerding that is, everybody. That is yeah. Congrats on that. Yeah. Oh, yeah can they? Can people even follow you on Friendster? I don't know. I don't know. No, my, I, I think my account name was M Butterflies. <laughs> um, yeah, I was, was really yeah. young, but. <laughs> 
I think the use of social media is kind of starting to be used for doing good through already, like we're, do, we're on there, we're doing good. And I, I want to kind of try and implement that in my business and um, doing, just doing good. And I would like to see the Great Lakes, which is an amazing freshwater source for our country. It's a huge billion, multi-billion dollar resource that we have. I'd like to see them cleaned up because the lakes I grew up in, I'm a lake. I'm a freshwater mermaid. Oh, okay. So the lakes I grew up on, um, you can't really fish out of them. It's kind of dangerous to swim in some of them. Um, but it, yeah, so I'd like to have that part of my company, but also kind of operate under, there's something called the Model Alliance, which is the first ever model union uh, yeah. founded by Sarah Ziff, which um, kind of wants to have model standards for American models in the fashion place in the in this country. And I want my com my company to follow that those standards. I want to push other fashion companies to follow the, those standards. Okay. So being a socially conscious um, person brings yeah. me more meaning, which allows me to exist in a state of joy and then be more fulfilled, which means I have true paradise in my life, which means I'm a paradisiac. Yeah. I actually really like that. You know, I actually really like charities that are like more specific like that. They actually yeah, like because you never you never hear about stuff like that. But people that I'm sure live in Michigan do care. But you know, instead of just like I think more we should care same, as a country so. too, because it's yeah. like a huge freshwater. When we run out of freshwater, people are gonna right. be like, "Have you ever been to Michigan?" I drink water every day. I drink water every day. I don't sometimes. know what I'm gonna do without it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about uh, how your experience was on America's Top Model. What did you learn from that whole? I don't know. I went to this um, therapist who could block out parts of your That's brain. That's not true. And I can't remember anything. That's not true. <laughs> Is it? Did you go to a therapist? I did. He like did hypnotherapy. I don't remember anything except for waking up to giant pictures of Tyra Banks. They can't block that part out. <laughs> right. For yeah. some reason. TPSD. It's too intense. They it? it just yeah. won't go away. Too much Tyra. Um, no, t it, um, Tom Model is awesome. It was every experience a human being can emotion. It took me a while to like get over the second place thing. I'm not gonna lie. I hung out on my family's cabin for maybe four weeks drinking. You still felt pretty heavily. good about second place, right? It was good. I mean, I mean it's, it's, like, it's hard. You fight for something so hard and you want it and like you really want the hundred thousand dollars to mm, yeah. kind of pay off college. But when that didn't happen, I was actually really happy. We were living in Barcelona when I was on the show and I hadn't been to Europe since I was uh, young in my first few years of college and I realized when I was in Barcelona that like all I really wanted to do is travel and I was doing this nine to five like design job at that point so when I didn't win I wasn't under a contract so yeah, I so kind of took like a one-way ticket to Europe and stayed gone for like seven years so that was yeah. a one-up probably couldn't have done that without that exposure um, so it's good I mean there's good things there's bad things basically you go through every human emotion yeah. You can go through on a reality show. No, and it must be double stressful just having cameras on and you, you all day long, don't... knowing that they're going to cut out exactly the worst moment like, that you had. I'm like the dumbest yeah. reality person ever because I don't, I haven't owned a TV since I was 17 years old. <laughs> so I like, so didn't, didn't even know the reality TV know. show rules. Like, people yeah. don't get famous off those things. The real world people, I wouldn't recognize them. So like <laughs> when people recognize me in Paris, I'm like, oh, people watch this. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I maybe would have been a little bit cooler. Um, you know, I would have been so uh. like, I'm going to win this thing, you know, like right. maybe I would have, have been so. Yeah, I think fast. you got a lot from it. Yeah, I, I got a lot. I wouldn't take it back, but I would never do it again. So guys, yeah, you should check her out. Uh, you've got uh, MelroseSwim.com for the, the new startup bikinis. that you have. Yeah, yeah, and then you follow you on Twitter at Lady Melrose. And then on Instagram, you're Mermaids Unite. Mermaids um, should unite. But yeah, but I, you know, I, I love the fact that you're taking this entrepreneurial <laughs> stance. I love the fact that you're coming to visit us and like you're learning about a lot of the fashion stuff we're working on. Totally. And, um, yeah, I just think it's really awesome. <laughs> you guys have yeah. a third room in here. Yeah. <laughs> move in. I love it here. <laughs> Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Appreciate you. I'm like, I'm moving. <laughs> okay. So we're closing out the show with Lindsay, who's here visiting. Lindsay used to live in Vegas. I did, yes. Does not live in Vegas anymore. No, it wasn't my, my ideal place to live, unfortunately, so I left and moved to Portland. What do we have to do to bring you back? Uh, it needs to rain more, so good luck. <laughs> and with that, we're closing out the episode. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Downtown Project. Hashtag.